everyone, I'm Marianne Mitchell. Welcome to Whole Artist Mastery, which is really all about owning your true authenticity and having the technical knowledge to create compelling work that reflects your unique voice. And then knowing how you show up in the world in the way that you want to be an artist. So to that end, today I'm going to talk about influences on our artistic voice, influences on who we are as a person, and how that absolutely has everything to do with the kind of artwork that we make. So I've determined that there are three key influences throughout our life well that really are that cover the span of our life from the very beginning to where you are now so here are the three key influences the first one is foundational what do i mean by that the foundational aspects of who we are as a person root back to where we grew up what kind of house we grew up in what city or rural area did we grow up in? Was it um, urban? Was it forest? Was it on a lake? Was it by the ocean? Was it in a tiny row house? Was it in a house that had many acres around it? And then how you grew up. What was your family paradigm like? Did you move around a lot as a kid? You know. Were you moving every two years? Did you stay in the same house for most of your life? Did you have siblings? Did you, were you an only child? All of, you know, what's the configuration of your family and the kind of relationships that you had in your family? The other aspect of your foundational presence in your, in your artwork is education. Where did you go to school? Was it a large school? Was it a very tiny school? Was it a religious background? And then there is religion. Many people grow up with a strong religious foundation in their life. Some people grow up with absolutely no religious foundation. All of that plays into what inspires you and why and how it comes out in your visual language. The second influence is situational, and that has to do with the present, both in terms of the environment around you and what's going on in your life. So for instance, what kind of a place do you live in now? Do you live in an apartment, in a big house, um, in a tent? You know, one of my clients has told me that she lived in a tent for a year with her two, three boys. Uh, I said, wow, that's incredible. It was right by the ocean. Um, how wonderful for her and for her little family to have that experience. And um, what else? Situational, how you feel. You know, I have noticed that when I am stressed or when I have a lot of structure going on in my life, I have to be very organized and very disciplined then my work starts to get a little tighter. And I don't mean tighter in terms of um, affected or uh, less interesting or less emotional. I mean that this, there's more architectural structure. Maybe that's because I need that structure or that's what's going on in my head and my heart right now is that everything has to be just right, you know, structured so that I can get through my day or get through what, what happens to be going on in my life at the time. Other times I felt freer and so the work flows more freely. I have less encumbrances, less on my mind, less stress, less things to worry about. Um, the space around me flows. So I vacillate between more structured and architectural compositions and more fluid and organic compositions, which you may actually see in my work. The third influence is emotional. Now, in my experience, the times that have produced some of the best work are when I am in a 
deeply emotional well, shall we say. And that can be tremendously happy and filled with joy to being completely um, overtaken by sadness and sorrow and anger sometimes. To illustrate what I'm talking about, I'm going to share a little bit about my life to show you how you can draw these various different things in your life, the three influences, back to your artwork and why you're inspired by what you're inspired by. So, I grew up in a house that my parents designed and built. They were both architects and it was on the outskirts of Philadelphia in a very wooded area. And the house itself is now what you would call a classic mid-century modern house. It had very large rectangular doors, glass doors and windows that framed the landscape outside. And much of the floor was um, flagstone so that were rectangle, rectangular pieces of flagstone, but also irregular stone walls with the mortar creating these kind of craggly lines, which show up a lot in my work, as well as the rectangles and the squares. And this combination of organic form and architectural form, which is really the foundation of my visual language, begins with that house, which I was extremely fortunate to have in my life for over 50 years. That's a whole other story. I had one brother, an older brother, and together we had all kinds of adventures. He led me down the path that I otherwise probably would have stayed away from, and I led him down paths as well. We were very much, um, we very much balanced each other in the way we thought and the kinds of things that we played. We had a lot of fun together. And as kids who had parents who were architects, being creative and um, being imaginative was very much supported. I feel extremely fortunate to have had that kind of background. It actually allows me to be the kind of artist and the kind of artist's guide that I am because I have such a um, ability to go down ways that are um, that have yet to be seen and you know go exploring in woods go exploring in conversations I love to explore in conversation and coming to a conclusion and talking with somebody about what's going on with them and where you know how does that tie back to the kind of work that they're making I also went to a Quaker school for most of from K through 12, which is also rather unusual. Quaker schools, uh, the Quaker religion very much values an, uh, equality. And so I grew up in an environment where men and women were seen as equal. Now that's debatable and that's again another story. But I always felt like I had just as much of a say as the boys in the class, even though I felt um, very shy about speaking up. And that's, again, and as we've got three different stories going on here now. Um, but I'm trying to refrain from telling you my entire autobiography here in this video. Uh, but it was a very closely knit class. There were only 80 kids in my class. So that was very supportive. And so then, you know, moving on to situational. Um, I currently live, as many of you may have seen, and I'm standing right now in my studio, I currently live in a house that was built in, in around 1860. It was an old, it is an old farmhouse. And it is currently on state park land, but it was originally a farm for couple of different families um, and founded by Mennonites actually. And the windows and the sense of light in here is absolutely amazing. Um, but prior to living here, we lived in Denver, Colorado for seven years. And so the, the silhouette line of the mountains 
really was tremendously influential in making work that was a little more, um, travel a little bit more across the composition, a little less structured. We also went to New Mexico quite a bit where the light quality was very influential and, and tremendously, it made me feel, it, may, it filled me with tremendous reverence for the land, for the spirit, and you know the the pueblo dwellings the adobe structure the adobe architecture the kind of lines that are there reminiscent of some of the lines that i grew up with in the stonework in my house and so you see these kind of curved lines and um askew uh, geometric forms showing a lot up in my work a lot and they are reminiscent of adobe architecture so those are places in my current life, but also I mentioned, you know, having a more structured uh, schedule versus a freer schedule. And you can see in my paintings how that manifests itself. So the painting that you'll be seeing called There, I actually made during lockdown. Now that was an interesting combination of both feeling terribly free, but also very sequestered because guess what? The whole world was sequestered at home, right? So you felt very sheltered and very much boxed in. And yet it'll, it was a time for many people to let their imagination flow. And so this piece is really about those two things coming together. The other piece is about being, you know, staring up at the night sky here at the farmhouse, which is somewhat of a dark sky, but there's still some ambient light from more uh, urban areas that are farther away, but it's a darker sky than I've lived in for a really long time. And that brilliant light of the full moon in the dark sky opens me up and in that respect you can see how it shows up in this particular painting called Nestling Beyond. The last influence is emotional and I wanted to share with you a time in my life that was very very difficult was when my parents both passed away very close to each other and I was in my mid-40s. And we were very close and my husband and daughter and I spent a lot of time with my parents. They lived very close by. So having them leave our lives very abruptly um, with short illnesses very close together was devastating for me. And so right after they passed on, they crossed over, Six months later, I had a show scheduled at the gallery that I had been showing in for a long time, uh, showed in in Philadelphia, the Rosenfeld Gallery for 19 years. And I'm got, I became very close with the owner and said, what am I gonna do? I just don't feel like I'm ready for a show at this point. He said, just try. So I went into the studio having not painted in two years because of my parents' illnesses and being the medical manager and the emotional turmoil that I was in. And that's exactly where I started. I had to get this emotional turmoil, this tremendous weight and sadness and grief out of me before I could even think about making finished work for a show. And to my great surprise, I made some of the best work I had ever made during that time because it came from this deep well inside me that was pure emotion. There was nothing around me in my external world that was influencing me. I was not feeding off of external visual inspiration. It was truly entirely coming from within. So I'm wondering, have you had that kind of experience where you're overcome with deep emotion? And the one that I shared was deep sadness and grief, but there have been many times when I've been overwhelmed with deep joy and tremendous euphoria. So how do you reflect or do you reflect on these various different sources in your life. Think about where you grew up, 
how you grew up, what kinds of places you were in, what kinds of family. Then situational, what are you going through now in your life and how is that influencing what's coming out in your practice? What kind of medium are you using to um, express what's going on in your life right now? You may be unaware of this entirely and I'm hoping that this video, that what I'm talking about will crack the egg a little bit if you've been stuck, if you've been sort of feeling like, I don't know what, where are my sources of insight? I don't know what I'm inspired by or having trouble connecting the dots between what's inspiring you and how it comes out in your visual language. I would love to hear some of your stories in the feed below this, this video. It's so interesting to me to learn about the people that I'm working with, to learn where they come from, what kind of families they grew up in, what kind of structures they grew up in, how, what kind of career they have, and how they think, how they feel. It's, it's it, what makes us human, and it's that that fuels our artwork, that that fuels our artistic voice, that meaning our foundation, our situations, and our emotions. So I really look forward to hearing your stories and thanks so much for watching. I invite you to check out the Whole Artist Mastery website. There's a lot for you there. And you know, if you're enjoying what Whole Artist Mastery is all about, like that, press that little like icon because the more likes we get, the more people who subscribe to this channel, the more people have an awareness of how our heart, our head, and our hand all work together to make something whole. And every artist who is putting all of that together is putting that energy out into the world. And that influences the worldwide energy field, which happens to be filled with a lot of fractured energy right now. So I invite you to make art that engages you intellectually, comes from your heart, while using the medium that best expresses your personal vision. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.